introduce the build head from the front into the build head carrier. Mind that the extractor points to the right in the firing direction. Place the control bolt with its control surfaces parallel to the firing direction into the bolt head and the bolt head carrier. Insert the firing pin from the rear into the receiver. Push in the safety pin until it is even with the side of the bolt head carrier. Before assembling the G36, all disassembled parts must be cleaned, carefully dried, and the metallic parts must be slightly oiled. Also oil the bolt guide rails in the receiver. Insert the gas piston into the gas cylinder. Introduce the push rod from the front into the receiver, push the rod against spring pressure to the rear, and insert it into the rear of the gas piston. Slide the handguard from the front onto the receiver and push in the locking pin. Place the magazine well with its front extensions onto the attachment studs on the receiver. Swivel the well upward until the magazine catch engages. Insert the bolt from the rear into the receiver. Insert the back plate with the recoil spring into the receiver. Introduce the bearing stud on top of the back plate into the hole at the top rear end of the receiver. Unfold and extend the buttstock. Before mounting the grip, cock the hammer all the way and press down the automatic sear. Subsequently, place the grip from the bottom onto the receiver and fasten it with both locking pins. After completion of the assembly, set the G36 at safe and carry out a functional test. For this purpose, cock the G36 and jack the operation of the build catch. Unset the safety, pull the trigger and reset the safety. All movable parts must work smoothly after reassembly. The G36 in the initial position cocked and set at safe. The bolt is in battery position. The bolt firmly locks with the locking locks of the bolt hat into the barrel extension. The trigger group comprises the following assemblies. Hammer. Safety lever index. Safety axle. Slide. Sear. Trigger. Bolt catch. Automatic sear. Hammer spring. Sear spring. For unsetting the safety, place the safety fire selector lever at E. The safety axle turns and allows the trigger to be pulled. When pulling the trigger, the front of the sear pivots downward and releases the hammer. The longitudinally movable sear is pushed all the way to the front by the sear spring. The hammer hits the firing pin and ignites the cartridge. Upon acceleration of the bullet, parts of the propellant gases enter the gas port and push the gas piston and the push rod to the rear. During the rearward movement of the bolt head carrier, the bolt head is rotated via the control bolt and the control cam in the bolt head carrier. This rotary movement of the bolt head disengages the locking locks and the bolt head separates from the barrel extension. The extractor in the bolt head extracts the empty case from the chamber. The rearward traveling bolt cocks the hammer. During the rearward travel of the bolt, the case is ejected to the right through the ejection port. In its rearmost position, 
the bolt hits the buffer in the back plate. The recoil spring returns the bolt to the front and the bolt head feeds the next cartridge from the magazine into the chamber. The automatic sear engages into the hammer and catches the hammer. The bolt head abuts the rear of the barrel whilst the bolt head carrier pursues its forward movement. This rotates and locks the bolt in the barrel extension. In the final phase of the forward movement of the bolt, the bolt head carrier pivots the automatic sear out of engagement with the hammer. The hammer is caught now by the sear, which is pushed to the rear. The G36 is ready to fire again. The complete sequence of operations is shown once more without interruptions. The G36 aiming optics are integrated into the carrying handle. The optical sight is provided with a 3 times or optionally a 1.5 times magnification and is specifically designed reticle. The reticle is provided with range marks from 200 up to 800 meters in steps of 200 meters. The center of the reticle is used for ranges up to 300 meters. The exterior diameter of the circular reticle serves as a lead mark for laterally moving targets at a range of 200 meters and a target speed of approximately 15 kilometers per hour. The interior diameter of the circular reticle corresponds to a man size of 1.75 meters at a 400 meters range. The stadia pattern at the left corresponds to a man size of 1.75 meters at ranges of 200, 400, 600 and 800 meters and is used as a rough range finder. The heights of the vertical range mark lines for 600 and 800 meters also correspond to a man size of 1.75 meters at the respective ranges. The horizontal line across the central reticle is used as an aid against canting. The sight is adjusted for elevation by means of the upper adjustment screw and for windage by means of the lateral adjustment screw. Rotating the adjustment screws for one graduation changes the point of aim for 2.3 cm at a 100 meters range.